2 Corinthians chapter number 12. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. I want to read a few verses here. Then we'll try to preach what the Lord has, has put on us. I'm in here this morning is thankful for grace. Man, if you're up and breathing this morning, whether it be 6.30 or 2 o'clock, be thankful for grace. Amen. Amen. Save your life, save. Amen. That's right. That's right. As the testimony and all was going a while ago, and talking about counting blessings, I'm just going to be honest. Sometimes... Did you count your negative things in life easier than you could count your blessings? You no, know, when I got saved, that's what I thought I had to do was not get anything I had done wrong. I was not thinking. I was not in the world. I, I'm just going to say that, you know, biggest part of the time, and it's shame on us, we can count the negative things and remember them and write, be easier writing them down than you were talking about than writing down the blessings. How many blessings do we get that we don't see? That we don't realize we got? <clears throat> How many negative things do we avoid because of God's grace? And so we don't even realize they're blessings. Amen? God's grace is truly amazing. Amen? And I'm going to tell you that's part of the, the thread in the rope. That's attached to that anchor that holds. Because without His grace, I wouldn't have a way to the anchor. Amen? But it's because of grace that any of us are attached to the anchor that holds us. This morning we want to preach out of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll go ahead and read. We're going to start in verse number 6. It says... For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear. Lest any man should think of me above that which he seemeth me to be, which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, and in reproaches, and necessities, and persecutions, and distresses, for Christ's sake, when I am weak, then am I strong. That would be a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day, for the grace that we we're talking about now that you've given us. Father, that has a way of finding us at our lowest moments, most trying moments. Those moments where hope seems distant. Lord, we're so thankful that grace can reach us. And you show us that grace and mercy and love where we're at to help us through it or around it or over it or whatever your plan is at that moment. Father God, we're thankful today that you love us the way that you do. It's already been said many times, Lord, help us to see our blessings over those negative things that happen in our life. Help us to look for the ways that you have delivered us, that you have helped us. You brought us through something, Lord. And 
Father God, I just pray for those that might even be struggling at this moment, Lord. You know each and every need. Not only do you know the need, but you know the answer that they need. You know the delivery method they need. And you need the time, you know the time of delivery that they need. Father, I just pray that we all, when we get in those situations, we might look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. The, ones that, the one that gives us strength. The one that helps us through. Lord God, I just pray today that if there be one here that is lost, that they especially might know how much your grace is working in their lives right now. Because Lord, that in their lost condition, they are one breath, one heartbeat, Away from eternal separation in hell. God, what grace that is. And I pray that they might understand the grace that you showed upon this world when you sent Jesus to the cross to die for their sins, for my sins. And Lord God, I just pray today that you might convict hearts to come to know you as Savior. Lord, I pray also that you convict each one that's a child of God in here. That we might look more to your grace and understand your grace and how it is sufficient for all things in our life, Lord. We love you and we thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I ask these things. Amen. We look at these verses, and I didn't read the first part of chapter 12. And there's a lot that I could say, go back and, and, and read that. There's a lot of information you can gather from that. But Paul was a man that, I mean, he really had it going on. He was not just some nobody. He was a man that had... The credentials, the, the background, the, 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 the family, if you will, the schooling, the prestige, the position. He had all those things, and then he had a special relationship with the Lord as well. And the Lord even allowed him to see some things in his life that others might not get to see in the way that he did. And I'm going to tell you, Paul could have been lifted up in so much pride. He could have thought himself a whole lot higher than what he was, which was just a sinner saved by grace. And he says that in the Scripture. But the Lord allowed some thorn in the flesh to conflict him, to keep him humble, to uh, let him know that Paul, even though you can do some things, you've, you've done some things, you've been a part of some big things, you've seen some things, you're still nothing without me. Are we anything apart from God? Just sinners apart from God. Amen? With God, though, we're sinners saved by grace, and that's a great thing. So as uh, the man that Paul was, was he free from stress? Was he free from trials and temptations? Was he free from heartache and hardships? He had it all just like we do. And I'm thankful for this verse because, you know, sometimes we, we look at Paul and, and just think, well, he, he, couldn't, uh, he had such a relationship with God that everything had to have come kind of easy for him. Furthest thing from the truth. So when we're going through something, 
And we get that feeling of, Lord, I'm, I'm trying to do for you. Why am I going through this? Let's look at Paul. Paul was troubled. We don't know exactly what was troubling him, but something was troubling him. And he had to go to the Lord for it. Things we have to go to the Lord for. You ever been to the Lord for something? Same thing more than once? I have. Many times. I tell you, God heard the first time. But when we get down, we're going to go back to the Lord and ask Him about it again. Paul did. I'm not saying anything against it. Paul finally got the answer. The Lord told him, he said, don't worry about it. You've got this. So you can experience how great my grace is. You ever think about things or situations in your life that maybe that's why it's there for so you can experience how great God's grace is? I'm not going to say it's fun. But how can we experience how great God's grace is if everything is easy? How do we know how great of a God that we serve even apart from salvation? In other words, not just at salvation, but at other times in our life. If we don't experience the down times. There's a lot of things that stress us. Amen? Everybody ought to be able to say amen real loud to that one. There's a lot of things that stress us. I wrote down the top ten things according to different... Um, surveys or, or studies or whatever. The number one thing that stresses us, and by stress I mean more than just what we go eat after church kind of thing. I mean stress. Real stress. <laughs> the death of a spouse, a child, or a loved one was number one on the list. Divorce or other marital problems personal injury or sickness, job loss, natural disaster, your house was, or your possessions was taken in a tornado or fire or flood or earthquake, something like that, war, financial collapse, prison, College. If you've been to college, you want to say amen. 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 I'd be so glad when I'm done. Amen. Now, you, you, you say amen for me. Now, yeah. Retirement. especially if they don't know the Lord. And I can't, I will say especially if they don't know the Lord. But I'll say also that even if they do know the Lord, because of where the focus is, the blessings are what we call cursings at that time. Paul could have got caught up in the woe is me and this problem, it's a nagging problem. It keeps coming back. It keeps bothering me. He could have got caught up in that. 
that is easy to do. Amen? And how much other things would have been neglected? How much of the New Testament might not have been written by, written down by Paul anyway? But don't get me wrong, God has a way. God's going to put in there exactly what he wanted in there. But Paul wouldn't have been a name that is mentioned in church as frequent if he'd have focused on just the thorn instead of the God that could handle the thorn, that could take care of the thorn. In these verses, I'm going to tell you, it gives me uh, it gives me comfort to know, it gives me encouragement really to know that as great a man as Paul was, he still had issues like me and you have issues. And he still had to go to God. And he had to go multiple times to God about it. To get the answer that was going to help him. Uh, why does things stress us out like they do? Especially if you're a child of God. I'll tell you, traumatic events in life has a way of stress us. Amen? Uh, can hurt us for a long time. And so many times we are hurt and we're stressed about that because we feel like we have no control over the situation. Don't we like to be in control? Everybody say amen. amen. Yeah, we like to be in control. And when something happens that is outside of your control, it stresses you because you feel like you've lost control. You feel like you don't have a, a part in the, an active part in the story, and you just have to sit back and take the blows, right? We get stressed out because of that. And we have to come back to the place to realize that God's grace in every situation, no matter how big or how small it is, is completely sufficient. We look at this verse. I want to read it again. It says, He said unto me, in verse 9, My grace is sufficient. Sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. What does sufficient mean? enough. It's enough. There is enough there to handle the job. To take care of the situation. To help you in the situation. When we think that we need to uh, have the control or own the, the control and the ownership of certain situations, we struggle more, don't we? How many times, and I've preached this many times out here, how many times, maybe i preached so much because I hadn't listened to it yet. I might need a little bit more. How many times, though, do we, we struggle, and if we'd have just listened to God and said, God, it's my problem, but I'm giving it to you, so now it's your problem, and you're just going to have to answer because I can't handle it. How much stress would we avoid? Most of it. Man, it's a hard thing. I've given you the example of somebody drowning, how they struggled. And I thought as I was studying even on this this morning, you remember watching movies when you was a kid? In nearly every movie, somebody fell into quicksand. Right? Yeah, adulthood scared me to death. I was going to try to carry around a big rope or a stick or something so if I fell in that pit of quicksand, I could get out easy. Because I thought it was everywhere. Because everybody in the movies fell in quicksand. Study on If you fall in the quicksand, what should you do? <laughs> you know the number one thing not to do? Struggle. <laughs> <laughs> going down. Get my phone out. <laughs> what do 
what I do. Siri, what do I do? Everybody's phone's going to start. The more you fight, you wiggle and squirm around, you're going to sink a lot quicker. That is how we do in stressing situations sometimes. We struggle and we sink quicker. I want you to notice, and I hope it's this way in all of your Bibles. In verse number 9, the answer came in red letters, didn't it? Now, in the original, it didn't come in red letters, but I'm thankful that they put the words of Jesus in red letters, because that was words that Jesus spoke to him. said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. <coughs> so I got to thinking about this. Who is graceful? Who's graceful? Everybody. Amen? Sometimes we get the notion of thinking that it's just graces for them lost sinners out there. Right? That would be everybody until you get saved. And then it's for those safe sinners out there. Amen. But I got a thing that I wrote down. The first one on my list was grace is for the sinner. You know who else it's for? I thought about last week's sermon. It's for the weary mom. Any weary moms out there? <coughs> Amen. Don't worry, Sister Amanda, at all after graduation, all that, that worry and, and, and weariness goes away, right? No, no, it does not. It does get worse. It, it, it gets worse. Amen. You at least pick them up and whip them and put them in the bed and say, I told you so. Now they can pick you up with you and say, get back in the other <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's also for the tired fathers. Any tired fathers out there? <laughs> Amen. Oh, that was just great. It's also for single mamas and single fathers out there. I know this one. It's also for them tired teachers out there. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It's also for the criminals. Even grace for them too. For the murderers. For the thieves. For whatever they've done. Grace is for them too. Isn't that great? Because we were all, whether we knew it or not, lumped in with that same bunch one day. And grace was for us. Grace is for the rejected spouse. It is for the grieving. It is for the lonely. It is for the poor. And it's for the rich. Amen? No matter what background you have, it is for the young and confused. And it's for us old and cranky ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's for us old and wise ones too. That, that, I should have thought that one through a little bit. For us old and wise ones too. It is for those also <coughs> that are proud. This is where we get into Paul. Paul could have been proud. Paul could have easily said, look at my credentials. Look at who I am, what I've seen, what I've done. Grace is also for the proud. It's for the religious. Amen? For the religious, whether it was Sadducees, Pharisees, the scribes, or 
any of us or those religious that are in other faiths besides the Christian faith? Is grace for the Muslim? Is grace for the Hindu? Is grace for the Buddhist? Grace was given to all people. When Jesus went to a cross and gave Himself for their sins, grace was given to everybody. Amen? Grace is given to the self-righteous as well. Those who think they don't need God. think they got all this under wraps. Grace is also given to them. Brother, grace is also given to the Pope. It's also given to the preachers. And it's also given to the parishioners. Who needs grace? Everybody needs grace. Everybody needs grace. And I'm so thankful while we're here, while we're upright and breathing, we have grace given to us. ever come to an end for someone? There is an end to the grace that God has given to those that have rejected it. Grace will utterly and totally run out. And if you die unsaved, you will understand how great grace was on the other side. You don't understand it now, but at that time you'll know how great grace was and how much you missed. <clears throat> Who needs grace? Everybody needs grace. How does grace show up? We'll just run through this quickly. Grace shows up by added strength when we need strength. By giving us stamina or endurance when we need that. It shows up in forgiveness. It shows up in peace. It shows up in removal of something. It shows up in having a plan for something. And there's a lot of other ways that we can talk about grace shows up. But I'm going to tell you what grace does. How it shows up, when it shows up. With whom it shows up, it's all in God's perfect time. Amen? And it shows up perfectly when you need it. We may not see it as that. We may not understand it as that at that time. But it always is perfect. Grace shows up in so many manners. Sometimes you are the uh, proponent to... Show God's grace to somebody. Sometimes you're the recipient of it from somebody else. Grace has showed up a lot of different ways in my life. And I would love to be able to tell you this morning that I recognize grace for what it was every time it showed up, every time it knocked on my door, but there are many times I did not. And I pray today as you said a while ago, that we would recognize, we would understand uh, what grace looks like when it comes to us. Because grace, as we preached before, is God's unmerited favor. What does that mean? We don't deserve it. We didn't earn it. We shouldn't even have it. But God's grace is that good that even though we couldn't earn it, we didn't deserve it. He freely gave it. Romans chapter 5. We'll turn to this right quick. One little verse. We'll soon come to a close. Romans chapter 5. Verse number 20. 
you know, as we think about that, who does grace ultimately come from? God. He's the only one that can give us such a promise and certainty of grace. You know what? You can ask me for grace. But you know what I am? I'm human. And I might not give it the way it needs to be given. I'm human. You know what? You're the same kind of human that I am. And you can do it the exact same way. But Jesus knows how to give perfect grace. He knows how to give all the grace that's needed. And God's grace is sufficient. You see, I want you to understand that Satan gives counterfeits to grace. He gives counterfeits. That's all Satan is, is a counterfeit. He's always wanting to be God, be like God, and do everything like God, except in his own way. Because he thinks that he's better than God. And he still thinks even though God flicked him right out of heaven. Like he was nothing. Satan will give us pleasures. And call it grace. See how much you're enjoying life. See how much that this takes your mind off the other things. He'll give us certain pleasures. That takes it off of the things that we don't like. And we'll think of it as grace. But I'm going to tell you, Satan's grace, so to speak, those pleasures will never be enough. Never be sufficient to give us lasting peace, lasting joy, lasting love, lasting satisfaction. Just long enough for us to get involved until he yanks the rug out from under us. Amen? To get us involved in sin. That's why I like Romans chapter number 5 right here. Verse number 20 it says, More the law entered, but the, that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Pleasures can't satisfy. Your, your uh, knowledge can't uh, sustain you. It's not enough. Your money can't sustain you. It's not enough. There is only one thing that can conquer sin and that is God's grace. Amen? It's the only thing sufficient enough to overcome sin and that was overcome through the blood of Jesus Christ. We can look all through the Bibles and you can see example after example after example after example of God's grace at work. But I'm going to be honest, I want to challenge you this morning to examine your own lives. I thank, I thank God everything just worked together. The testimony, the songs, and all. I want to challenge you in your own life to examine how grace has worked for you. How grace has showed up in your life. How grace has been sufficient for your every need in your life. You say, well, Jason, I understand, but there's some things I went through that hurt, and there's some things that didn't turn out the way I wanted to. You know what? That is part of life. You know what? That is part of sin. It? I mean, there's things that happen that, that there's still repercussions from it. Still things that will happen that is bad. God getting drunk, drives a vehicle and wrecks and kills somebody. He's going to go to prison. Well, shouldn't God's grace keep me out of prison? There's some things you just have to do your time for. But you know what God's grace does? 
it can go with that individual in the prison. And it can deliver him from something far worse than the prison cell. It can deliver him from hell. Amen? <clears throat> he may need to get to that spot before he'd look up. There's some things in your life that may happen. You may have to go through. Listen, we could go back to the, the Hebrew children. They were thrown in the fire. They were thrown in the fire. Where was God's grace? Why didn't God deliver them to start with from that fiery furnace? Something they had to go through, but God was in the fire with them, giving them grace. Does it happen the same way every time for everybody? No, it does not. God knows what you need, when you need it, how you need it. And God's the one who does it. Because grace belongs to Him. Today, if you're here and you're lost, I'm going to tell you what you need today more than anything, and that's God's grace. Because in God's grace, it's wrapped up the gift of salvation. Saved by grace through faith. Grace this morning got you here. Grace this morning give you ears to hear the Word of God. But even more important than that, grace this morning gives you a heart to hear the Holy Spirit of God. Then grace this morning gives you an opportunity to come to know God. Then grace gives you the means to know God. He gives you an advocate, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Sitting at the right hand of the Father. And when you come and kneel before Him, He says, Father, that one kneeling on that altar at the head of Hurricane Baptist Church on this day, right now you see Him. They're a no-count, low-down, dirty sinner, but I died for them. And my blood was shed for them. And I want them to be saved. to your heart that passes understanding. And then grace will pick you up from where you are and when you give that testimony of being saved, grace gives you a joy that you didn't know you could have. And then grace will go with you. It's not just in church, but it goes out the door. It goes with you in your everyday daily activities if you'll look for it. Aren't you thankful today that where sin abounds, grace so much more abounds? Lost friend, there's not a sin you've committed that God cannot forgive. God can forgive. He's good at it. He forgave an old sinner like me. He forgave an old sinner like you. We're going to stand and sing some verse of song this morning. Somebody needs some grace. Somebody needs some poured out straight from the Father this morning. I'm going to tell you, come to Him and you can experience the grace that I've been preaching about, talking about, and that we've all experienced that's been saved by the grace of God. We're going to stand to see. This altar is open for you to come and pray. Pray where it, it don't matter where you pray as long as you're praying and asking God to save you and then tell us what He does. Amen? While we stand, while we sing, this moment is God's huge grace <coughs> in your life because He's given you opportunity to come to know Him. While we stand and sing, would you come? Thank you.